Hi, today I'm looking at the Schrade Melon Tester or Fruit Knife and you'll see I've got two of them here. The one on the top is actually quite old. Um, it falls somewhere, as far as its origin, it's probably somewhere between uh, the 50s and the 60s and the one on the bottom is actually much newer and is almost brand new in fact. So, uh, let me give you a quick little bit of background. Um, the knife on top actually belonged to my grandfather who worked in the agriculture department at the uh, US-Mexico border in Southern California and his entire department was issued these knives uh, decades ago in order to uh, inspect fruit and vegetables that came across the border so as uh, vendors brought their their fruits and vegetables uh, to the US they would take a sampling from those fruits and vegetables cut them open and inspect them to see that they were um, you know that they didn't have any sort of uh, infestation or you know or you know bugs or some other unpleasantness I suppose and uh, he used it for years and years and years he passed it along to my dad and back in 2005 my dad passed it along to me along with a collection of several other older classic knives and I'll show some of those in some other videos um, and, and when I when I received it I was you know, I, I liked it a lot. I loved that there was a knife that uh, had some decent history. You know, there was something, a knife in my family that had been used for years. And, and so it has a lot of sentimental value for me. And I didn't want to damage it or hurt it. And so what I did was, at the time, I decided to go out and buy uh, another similar knife. And this is, in fact, the same model. But this one is almost brand new. And I bought this one so that I could sharpen it and test it and play with it, carry it around and see how it worked without you know doing any damage to the original so that I could keep that one in as nice a condition as possible. So I've had them both for about seven years now. Um, neither one, the old one especially, has gotten much use. Um, I have carried the newer one a few times you know just to see how it carried. I've cut open a few uh, foods and fruits with it just to see how it works but it's not, uh, it's, you know, it's a nice traditional design. It's actually an excellent knife, but it's just not really my style. Um, I do tend to go with the more uh, contemporary, you know, pocket knife designs with the clip and such. So this is just something that was more for fun, more of a novelty for myself. Um, the specs between the two knives vary a little bit, and I think that's really just because the older one had been used so much. The blade is a little bit shorter, uh, the handle is a little bit narrower, and I'm going to chalk up some of that to wear. So I'll go ahead and give you the specs on the new one. The blade length is uh, 3 and 7 8 inches and the overall length is 8 and a half inches. Uh, it weighs 1.8 ounces, so very light. Uh, the older one varies a little bit from all those. It's only 1.4 ounces. It's a little bit shorter in blade length and then of course in overall length. Uh, but otherwise the materials and construction are, are very similar with just a few differences. The blade steel uh, is a bit of a mystery. On some of the newer blades, Schrade just started calling all of them razor blade stainless. And I did do a little bit of research online and was not able to really narrow down exactly what uh, what that steel's makeup is. So for my own, you know, for my own personal use, I equate it to uh, other similar stainless steel knives, um, classic slip joints, and even uh, Victorinox's uh, Swiss Army knives. So that's really the, the closest point of reference that I have. I just couldn't tell you exactly what it's made from. Uh, the blade shape you can see is kind of a elongated spear point. And these are fully flat ground. So there's, you know, the, the primary grind starts at the spine of the blade and comes all the way down until we get to the, the uh, actual sharpened edge. Uh, the handle material is celluloid so I, I guess you would say it's a type of plastic synthetic material um, it looks a lot like ivory to my eyes I'm no expert on ivory but it, it has a similar look and maybe the the color especially on the older one um, the way it's kind of worn and and turned over the years color wise makes me think of ivory uh, they both have thin brass liners inside you can see them there and uh, the overall, you know, the overall balance of the knife, it's not really as much of an issue as it might be with some of today's newer designs, but it is quite balanced. It feels very even from front to back of the, of the knife. 
Um, it's very thin and narrow, but it is comfortable. You know, it's obviously we're not looking at anything fancy, no, no finger grooves or anything, but it, you know, it's, it's just so diminutive. It's so small and so thin and so light that it's very comfortable and the long handle means that uh, you can fit your whole hand on it comfortably. It should fit a lot of different size hands. Um, these aren't that popular today, so you probably aren't going to see too many out there. But if you do see one, especially you know if you're at a pawn shop, thrift store, um, you know a yard sale or something like that, if you see one, pick, uh, definitely pick it up and try it out. They're they're fun knives. They have some cool history. They've uh, been used uh, for years and years and years, and I think that they're just kind of neat, kind of unique. Um, it's you know again because of the size it's it's small and it just disappears in your pocket you throw it in your back pocket or even in your front and you don't even know it's there uh, the only time it might be a nuisance is if it turns on its side you know if it if it goes perpendicular to your pocket that might be kind of annoying because it sits kind of wide but for the most part it'll kind of slink down into the crease into the edge and and just kind of melt away um, it opens with a nail nick as a lot of the older slip joint designs do. So, you know, no one-handed opening unless you have magic alien fingers. <laughs> um, and I won't really get into stuff like that. You know, the fit and finish is, is all actually quite nice. I thought it was nicely done, but as far as, you know, you know, I don't really think I have to get into much, you know, blade centering, stuff like that. Um, it's just such a basic design. It's actually quite inexpensive, or at least it was at the time. So when they originally came out, I'm not completely sure what the price was, but when I went to buy this one, I really only paid somewhere between $8 and $12 for it. It was next to nothing. I bought it from SmokyMountainKnifeWorks.com, which I imagine a lot of you uh, knife enthusiasts are familiar with. And again, it was, it was you know, it couldn't have been more than $10. I don't remember the exact price, but it was very inexpensive. And today I went and looked up online to see what the prices are. And... Uh, they don't seem to make them anymore. It doesn't seem that uh, the newer Schrade company makes them anymore. And I know that uh, some of the classic slip joint companies like Case still make melon tester knives, but they're very pricey. So you might be lucky to find one from one of the lesser brands. Um, you know, I saw Rough Rider was one of those brands that was still making them, and they were like seven or eight bucks. But as far as the quality, I couldn't, I couldn't really say for sure how good they are. Uh, but some of the stuff from Case will run you $100 and up. So I would just say be on, if you're interested in one, be on the lookout for one on the used market. And if you see one for a fair price, you know, or whatever you deem to be fair, go ahead and snap it up. Uh, these are slip joint knives. And the springs are nice and snappy. Uh, when I received this old one, when I received Grandpa's knife there, um, it was very stiff. And it took me quite a time to get the blade out. But I did put a little 3-in-1 oil on the joint and it has been nice and snappy ever since and this one that I actually bought new is even snappier so they're they're uh, very nicely designed very simply designed um, and they do you know they, the spring is strong uh, they do stay in place quite well and I imagine you know if you're just doing stuff like cutting through soft materials like fruits and vegetables you're never gonna have to worry about the blade closing on you it's not even really a consideration um, and I have used it to cut a few fruits and vegetables, and it does nicely. And the reason that we've got such a long blade there, if I didn't already mention before, is so you could cut cleanly through different produce uh, in one slice without having to make multiple cuts. It was something you could do quick and easily. The thin you know, profile there and the narrow width on the blade means that you can make nice thin slices through fruits and vegetables, um, get in a nice cross section, or even to cut some off for you know, taste testing. Um, so it's, it's very functional. It does exactly what it sets out to do. Um, I haven't really sharpened this one at all. I've stropped it a few times. And I can't really talk about how easy it is to sharpen. But again, my experience with it has been that it seems very similar to your average Swiss Army knife. And so if you're familiar with the edge retention you know, on your Victorinox knives, um, expect this one to be about the same. Um, there's really not much more I can say about them. It, for me, it was really just more kind of a walk down memory lane. I thought I'd put it up online and see what other people thought about it. And uh, basically just share something else from my collection. So uh, inspector's knife, fruit knife, citrus tester, melon tester, whatever you want to call it. It's a cool knife, cool little piece of uh, American history. And if you see one out there, pick it up and let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.